you know what I love the film because it was I was part of the family I don't know how you, especially those beautiful moments in which they're celebrating Christmas and they're all together and they drop on the floor and how did you accomplish that and making us feel that we're part of your family of the family in the film ah um I think uh the family, how, how we got that to feel so real. Um, I think, of course, it has to do with uh, that it comes from a true story, uh, my own uh, autobiographical story. I knew, uh, I know these people, uh, and I know how a blended modern family lives together. Uh, and of course, every family is different, but I think it's very important to get like the specific feel of something and then it becomes universal. So um, we worked with the children, uh, you know, ahead of the shoot, uh, taking them to uh, three days in the mountains to get to know each other, but never talking about the movie. We were just talking about, you know, how it is to be siblings. And all these children had very, very different uh, childhoods. You know, one had no siblings, you know, and it was only one who had tons of siblings. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then during shooting, it was like uh, we were playing a lot. It was, it's a very physical family. They, very, you know, in that. the corona times, it's very, <laughs> it's refreshing to watch, you know, people who uh, are so playful physically. So, Maria, how important was it for you to write this story when you were going through, through the illness or facing that news? Um, actually, I did not want to make this film because uh, I personally uh, am not very fond of sentimental cancer stories. Um, so that's one part of it. And the other part of it was that, um, you know, I had, uh, I had a terminal diagnosis. I, I was not going to live more than three months. So when I was still living after three years, <laughs> and the death was canceled, you know, uh, I started grieving, you know, because I couldn't, I couldn't do what I used to do. I couldn't write stories. I couldn't direct. Um, so it was through grief that I suddenly realized that I couldn't, there was no way around it. I had to tell this story. I tried all, everything else, but this stood in its way. It was an, ex it was an experience I couldn't uh, ignore. It was, oh. it was such a, you know, before and after experience. And I was also very, I became also very curious, you know, looking back on the incident, you know, which was three years ago when I started working on the script um, and thinking like, what, did I do that? Did I say that? You know, so everything started very, very personal. And then, you know, slowly by slowly working out the material, it became fiction, although it's based on something very, very specific. Impersonal. Yes, uh, of course, it, uh, definitely personal. And I think, you know, when you get death threat like this and you survive, I received a huge amount of courage. Uh, you know, I was not afraid of, you know, of telling shameful things, you know, which I would never, you know, I would never have told, uh, you know, uh, if not. And, and uh, looking at things which are, you know, things you almost don't dare to think of and <laughs> less to talk about, you know. Uh, and I thought this was uh, uh, very liberating. The relationship between Anne and Thomas, it's, uh, I think it's a little damage for a certain level but then they find themselves again it's, or they accept each other. It's more like acceptance. Do you think, do you agree? And if you can talk about it. 
Yes, um, you know, it's a portrait of two people who, a portrait told within nine days, but telling about a long life together through these nine Christmas days. And with this uh, terminal diagnosis and everything is, you know. Um, and when this happens, they, their status is uh, somebody who have, you know, lost love. Um, so uh, their first goal is to sort of uh, just be able to, you know, be a part of this together. Uh, so that the kids can actually see that they are able to work <laughs> or to stand together, not about loving each other. So, uh, you know, from uh, the title Hope, uh, I think, you know, audience would think in the beginning, will she survive or not? That that's, the, you know, what the title refers to. But as this story evolves, um, they become... They become, uh, you know, the main characters in a love story without them knowing it almost. We can tell as an audience, but they don't, they're not aware of it almost. And that's why it's a very different kind of a love story. Because it it's about two people who finds, uh, who learns to know each other again and, and accept, um, accept the lives which has been lived. Oh, hey, Maria, I thought it was beautiful how she is uh, so caring about the children that she just wants them to go through the acceptance of the bad news, but she's almost selfless in a way. And I guess that uh, goes together with being a mother. I don't, I don't have children, I, mm -hmm. but... Uh, I can relate to those feelings of protection in, I mean, a big heart, incredibly protective. Yes, I think, um, you know, um, there's, it's, it's very uh, uh, filled with contrast because on the one hand, you know, when you know you're going to die and you're high on steroids, <laughs> You become very, you become very, very selfish, you know, because you have, you're going to survive, right? So you become selfish and navel gazing and everybody else is like tiptoeing around you because of that. Um, because you can't, you know, you know, say again, somebody was dying, you know, so you, you're the queen on steroids and dying. And um, at the same time, all this ch children is life. And, and I think uh, it's, it's, um, this story is also about having uh, biological children and stepchildren and this blended family. Whereas these children, they are siblings, but when somebody's dying or somebody is getting born, biology is very present and things happen which you're not expecting. So it also, the story also deals about the taboos of this. You know, how you, how you can love uh, your children, step biological children differently. Not necessarily more or less, but it's different. And she, you know, as for dying, she is so direct. Um, yeah. In the hospital she room, is, she says that on a very intense way. Yes. It was scary, but it was truthful. Yes, yes. So I have, you know, while writing this story, uh, the script, I was, uh, you know, I was never thinking about the audience. Uh, I was thinking about, you know, what, what was I, my curiosity, you know, what could keep my interest, uh, interest uh, going, you know, developing this through a long time. And what fascinated me. And the fascinating part is that when you work with memories, uh, which is, has enough distance, <laughs> not yesterday's memories, but way back. Um, the, you know, all the noise disappears and the crucial, uh, you know, es essence of emotions crystallize. So, and when I, you know, this I've been realizing earlier works, 
but here especially i think that if you don't uh, if you try to censor that then you have lost so non censoring uh, you know your uh, the memories and uh, the emotions which are not necessarily flattering <laughs> and actions which are not necessarily flattering and and there's a lot of absurdities in this as well so i was also having a lot of fun you know seeing what you were able to do towards other people uh, and how you, you reacted you know on things um interviewing my own children of how they remembered certain episodes during this week uh years afterwards you know how how they responded to me as you know because i was so drugged and uh, crazy so i couldn't you know see who i was really you know um so and i think that getting to a story with this material which is so personal i think it also becomes very universal it's a beautiful story and i want to congratulate you i had a wonderful time it was very I felt very, very close to the story, also because of my own experience. But uh, even if you don't have that experience, it's a beautiful story, very human. But my last question would be: How satisfied are you with the fact that the film has got all this recognition, and you might be coming or or virtually coming to the Oscars as a nominee in Best International Language? Ah, that's fantastic if that happens. I think I'm going to become a millionaire, move to Hollywood, <laughs> buy a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's your uh, dream. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's, my dream is going to come true. <laughs> no, but seriously, I, I, I uh, it's one it's a wonderful recognition for the movie because I'm, you know, um it's a love story it's a different kind of love story but nevertheless it has the engine of the story is a medical story and medical stories they don't you know necessarily sell that well they're not so easy to get out there so uh, uh it has given it already it has got lot tons of good uh attention and we've sold to 40 countries and uh Hopefully, the theaters around the world will open <laughs> soon, so that uh, it will be screened. So it's all about that the movie is going to be screened and shown and people seeing it.